Hey everyone, welcome to Correlations, the Living Life with Astrology podcast. I'm your host, Matthew Stelsner, and I am joined today by my dear friend and colleague, Jessica Deritza. I'm so happy to have you with me today, Jessica. How are you doing? It's good to be here, Matthew. I'm doing well, thank you. I'm excited for our journey today. Me too. And today is, uh, it happens to be the day after we recorded our last episode, and uh, we talked about the U.S. Democratic uh, primary season uh, yesterday, and we especially focused on uh, the charts of uh, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. And in this episode, we want to look at some of the charts for the other uh, candidates. And uh, since yesterday, we had the, the South Carolina um, primary and uh, Joe Biden had a big win. Uh, he needed to have a big win. He, he invested all his resources in South Carolina and it paid off for him. And so uh, we're going to definitely look at Biden's chart today. And uh, I think we'll look at Bloomberg's chart and we'll look at uh, Buttigieg's chart. And I think maybe we'll take a quick peek at Amy Klobuchar's chart. And we're going to have a general conversation, I think, about what it is about politicians and the, the signature of a politician in their natal charts. So we can kind of tease out a few things that we tend to see in the charts of politicians and what the difference between certain kinds of politicians that are, you know, <laughs> power mongers and other kinds of politicians that are more about fighting for uh, the working class and the, the, the betterment of all humankind. Those kind of politicians. What's the difference? We're going to maybe talk about that. And also, I think we'll take a look at the chart for the Democratic Convention in July and the chart for the election and maybe do a little transit analysis. We're going to just see where it goes. Okay, Jessica? Sounds like a plan, Matthew. Sounds like a plan. Um, yeah, you're you're our captain, and I'm on board <laughs> the ship, and I'm your first mate. Yeah, my co-pilot. Oh, is that what it's called? Yeah, I thought we were on a ship. Yeah, uh, it's a starship. Oh, fantastic! I love those. <laughs> it's, we 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 fly starships here on Correlation. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it gets really Neptunian, though, and we uh, get on a pirate ship and uh, sail off to the uh, uh, the seven seas or whatever. But today we're on a starship, and you're my co-pilot, and I may uh, pass you the wheel as I've done in the past. Um, <laughs> if things get if things get a little uh, if anything gets gnarly, I'm just gonna say take over the wheel, and I'm gonna go do the engineering. And make sure everything's <laughs> working <laughs> properly. So, yeah. It's still in uh, top ship shape. Yeah. We, we, uh, let's just acknowledge that it's Mercury retrograde. <laughs> and we, yes. It's also Saturn square Uranus. And we've had a little bit of some tech issues. But I think it seems, <laughs> seems like uh, so far the audio is mostly working. So we're just going to pray to Uranus and Mercury to support us in our journey today. Well, our most um, loyal uh, listeners will probably know how many times we've said that line before. <laughs> have, we, have we said that before, Jessica? <laughs> this is our 35th episode, right? Did I yes. say it's 35th episode yes. of Correlations. And how many of those episodes would you say we've had tech issues? 27? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah I mean, that's generous you would you. Uh, you would think by now i would know how to dial it all in but wow hmm, so many moving parts there are and so yes let's drop in okay so yeah the south carolina primary happened yesterday and a uh, big win for Biden, and now the media is really celebrating him, and and uh, he's, you know, they're they're definitely pushing the idea that he's going to have a big bump, and 
he's got a bigger chance of getting in the game, which uh, I think maybe he does a little bit. It's He, he won big. So let, let's maybe start by taking a look at Joe Biden's chart, shall we? Yes, that sounds like a plan. Okay. I'm going to show it here. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. You nice a, president. He's such a he's a nice man, wouldn't you say? He seems um, I don't know, is he? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. I've never met him myself. Um yeah, does he seem mostly jolly, mostly kind of Jupiterian, yeah. big smile, gregarious? That's right. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Um has he um a shadow side of that yes i think we've seen that pretty clearly oh look at that he has sunshine jupiter what do you know so, sun mercury venus trying jupiter even better look at that i mean that big beaming smile of his uh, the warm heartedness that he shines with apparently yeah. he does yeah. seem to be grumpy behind the scenes uh, yes, and he yes. does have Mars square Pluto, which I think we'll uh, maybe say something about. And it's it's interesting. Uh, three of the major candidates, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden and Mike Bloomberg, they're all born with Saturn Uranus conjunctions. And I think you're the, the expert here on Saturn Uranus being born under the next conjunction. And I imagine you might have something to say about the difference between how it's playing out in Joe Biden's chart versus Bernie Sanders and a preview of coming attractions with Mike Bloomberg. It's a (laughs) what does he have again? Um, I'm just going to take a quick peek at it for a second here because I think it's an interesting contrast before we. Oh, whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Because he's got it big time. It's 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 a Mars Saturn Uranus. Uh, is it a conjunction? That's the thing I want to say. Yeah, tr- uh, triple conjunction. Yes, it's a t- look at that. Wait, I haven't showed it yet. <laughs> you, can't, <laughs> you can't see it yet. Here we go. Here we go. Mike Bloomberg. Oh, I pulled it up twice. What about that? Okay, here he is. Right? No. Yeah. Yes. It, it's there. Yep. Okay, so yeah, look at that. Tight Mars Saturn Uranus triple conjunction square to his sun and the moon and Mercury, really, right? Or, yeah, mm-hmm. Mercury is square. Yeah, it's within nine degrees. The moon's within, um, I guess, it's within 11 degrees. It's all in there. Mercury moon conjunction with the sun. Mercury moon tight square Mars. I think it's interesting that Bloomberg has Mars square Mercury coming back to the to what we looked looked at in the last episode with Elizabeth Warren, who's born with a Mars-Mercury conjunction, and he's got Mars square Mercury moon. I mean, that alignment really captures that moment with Warren, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, two Mars-Mercury people kind of going head-to-head as they do, getting an image right now of the ram and, you know, the horns and just, you know, (laughs) locking in and going into battle. Yeah. And the way she was just standing right next to him, just like taking him out, and that to me feels like the Mars squaring to the moon Mercury. Just that sense that he's being, uh, yeah. I mean, she's fighting for uh, for everyone in that moment, but he's she's especially standing up for women, and he's he's been on the receiving end, I think, of a lot of critiques from women especially the ones he has non-disclosure agreements with well look at that um not only that moon square mars but that venus opposite mm-hmm, pluto that mm-hmm. he has that's right we'll and talk about the potential for a pretty big shadow uh sexually with women that's right mm-hmm. yeah and, and then using one's power potentially over the women, right? The power can be money. The power can be the 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 status, right? He's the boss. It's his company, um, right? He's he's the top dude, and typically the top dude, especially billionaires, are used to getting what they want. The way that the world and their reality responds to them in their feedback loop, kind of like Facebook algorithms. It, he's constantly being mirrored. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Whatever you want, whatever you want. And 
you know, and it's very recent in our history, very, very recent in our human history, um, that the most powerful, wealthiest, or 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 strongest, right? Like the definition of who's the most powerful has changed over time, right? Whether that used to be physical power of who was the biggest um, or the strongest, yes. To now, who's the wealthiest? Uh, it, who has the gold makes the rules, and you know, it's very recent in history that that's starting to get dismantled, and that's what Elizabeth Warren um, displayed on the stage. What do you think it is about the Venus Pluto alignment that is so often? Uh, this is one of the alignments I would say that is very often in the charts of politicians. And yeah, it's, a, it's a love of power. Love of power. Venus is is what we love, and it's it's what we are like magnetically drawn to. It's our desire, and with Pluto, it's power. But it, Pluto also intensifies. The, the desire so it goes both ways it's like the love of, 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 of power and the desire for power and then the intensification of one's desire and it becomes very primal it becomes very instinctive and you know where pluto is in the chart is often where a lot of our unconscious material is or a lot of our repressed material it's also where we can see um a lot of shame and uh-huh. so sometimes with venus pluto we can see things like uh uh, things that uh, um, tend to be more coercive and manipulative power struggles within relationships, particularly with female or feminine figures in one's life and issues around domination and con- con- control. It's, it's a very kind of territorial possessive energy. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that um, when it's between two consenting adults and, you know, it's being worked with, but, when the there's a hierarchy and there's a power imbalance, which there is when you're a billionaire white man who owns a conglomerate, I mean, it really sets you up to to potentially misuse that power pretty easily. We're gonna pause for a second, Jessica, because you there was a lot of distortion there, and we're back. Took a little pause there, everyone. We had some recording issues, a little sound issues you may have noticed. Jessica's on a different microphone. I think we're going to be all good now. And Jessica, you were saying some some just super awesome stuff (laughs) there about (laughs) about about Venus Pluto and how it relates to Mike Bloomberg being uh, having some serious uh, shadow material there with the sexual harassment and the non-disclosure agreements. And so I guess the question would be, how would you see it? Because we see it a lot in all kinds of politicians and sometimes it's there, definitely there's the love of power uh, theme and the sexual shadow uh, theme that can go with Venus Pluto. But how would you see it in terms of like a healthy side to seeking political power and influence on behalf of love perhaps that could be a different version of it well look i'm gonna talk a little bit like barack obama he always says this well look (laughs) you know you have to understand the context of bloomberg which is he's a billionaire he he when i looked at a graph of the amount of wealth that he has compared to the other democratic candidates um they were using um, like, you know, like little tiny dots. And it's like Sanders had like a couple dots and Bloomberg had pages and pages. Right. Worth. And this is what, this is exactly what we're talking about here. When that level of power goes unchecked, which is what you get with that amount of wealth, it's unchecked power. That's why no one should really have that much money because you start to live in a world where you exist above the law because you can buy your way out of anything. That's, that's a big part of what capitalist socialism is. We live in a socialist um, world already, um, but it's a capitalist socialism. And what that means is, is that if you have a lot of wealth, you can pretty much buy your way out of anything. And you've seen that also with Trump too. So 
first things first, when you're looking at any Pluto aspect is like understanding, like how is that power emboldened and in what way has it been normalized or justified? Uh Mm -hmm. And with Venus Pluto, that unchecked power can get pretty dark, pretty fast. But when someone has come to, you know, a more balanced and healthy and mature version of it, then you can see someone who um, shows up on behalf of empowering everyone they come in contact with through their relational field. Venus is our relationships. And Pluto can be channeled through those relationships to empower the feminine, to empower women. You know, we could maybe want to see Bloomberg coming in here. And as Elizabeth Warren said, you need to acknowledge what was at the heart of the stop and frisk, which was racial profiling to brown and black young men. Um, And, you know, acknowledge the harm that was done there. And when when amends are made, uh, when something like that's happened within the Venus Pluto aspect, what you can see is that person moving toward an expression of it where they would invest their resources, in this case, his money, um, to maybe helping a woman get elected or more women coming into office, like to empower the feminine, to empower uh, women. Like he, he has money as a resource. Now, not everyone has money who has Venus Pluto. So whatever it is that gives you power, you can wield that in a positive way, with the positive side of Pluto is regeneration, right? It's it's the creative life force of the of the Shakti energy that comes through, and it's it's a beautiful um, life giving energy. So it's just a matter of how you direct direct it. Yes, and I, I think I hear you saying it's. Uh... And you say this a lot. Um, you have to see the chart in the context of the the actual person, their actual life story, their their history, their privilege or lack of privilege. And yeah, I think for sure Pluto Venus can be yeah a kind of force of nature that is love um, and. I think it, there can be a kind of impulse to be that force of love in the world that, uh, yeah, has a positive influence um, to support uh, the disenfranchised and to bring a, a kind of force of kindness um, to those who are in desperate need of it. Well, the, the thing about Um, sexuality, and this is a big component of Venus Pluto, is sexuality is not inherently good or bad. It doesn't naturally contain any value judgment or morality to it. It's the way that we embody our sexuality, whether that is in a clear way or in a distorted way. And oftentimes if we have trauma or we have a complex of feeling inferior or inadequate or small, we can become very power hungry to compensate for feeling full of shame and unworthiness. And you can see that with Venus Pluto. And when you're, if you're coming from that place, then one response to that is to overcompensate and to be all powerful. And Mm -hmm. That's problematic when it's um, harming someone. There's nothing wrong with using one's power over someone else in sex. That that actually can be a very beautiful thing between two consenting adults in a very safe container. So for me, you have to look at all the the uh, astrological um, planetary pairs combinations and say, you know, is this happening within consent? Is this happening within safety? Because you get very different narratives. There's Venus Pluto in a really safe, awesome container sexually, and you could do all kinds of amazing things with power and aggression, primal libido. That's very sexy. There's nothing wrong with um, liking to be choked or choking someone else, as long as there's consent between those two adults. But when you're choking someone out, either literally or metaphorically, which can happen with the Venus Pluto, you know, you're putting someone in a compromised position that can often be life-threatening. 
And when the person in power doesn't have enough empathy to see what the effect of what they're doing has on the other person, that's dangerous. And that is a real potential shadow expression of Venus Pluto, especially with someone uh, like Mike Bloomberg, who, you know, like most billionaires in this country, have a tremendous blind spot around how privileged they truly are. They're, li- they're literally living in a different world than the other 99% of the people on the planet. A different world and a profoundly different quality of consciousness that they just live in all the time that mm-hmm. is shaped by their power and privilege. And I think even the most philanthropic, the most well-intentioned billionaires are still um, have a hard time uh, relating to what it's like to be a regular, everyday, normal person who um, has to work really hard just to get, make ends meet. And that's just the truth. And if you can't fully acknowledge that, then that just speaks to how great the blind spot really is. And it's it's a collective blind spot as well that we all have somehow agreed that it's okay for people to have billions of dollars in this uh, in in our country and around the world. Somehow we've made this decision that it's okay for three people to have as much wealth as the bottom fifty percent of the entire planet. It's not that we're saying it's okay, but somehow we've gotten to this place where uh, I think it, I think that's what's shifting right now is that the billionaire class and the idea of that somehow the distribution of wealth can be like this is, uh, you know, okay, we're, we're, we're challenging it on the political stage, especially right now in the United States with um, two billionaires in the Democratic race and one in the president in the White House. Uh, we should mention that one of those billionaires dropped out yesterday, um, Steyer. Um, so... Yeah, I think there's other interesting. I I started to ask you about the Saturn Uranus and how we can see it here in Bloomberg so strongly. Mars, Saturn, Uranus square both the sun and the moon. And uh, and then in Joe Biden's chart, maybe let's go back there. I do want to talk about how maybe Mike Bloomberg's uh, Mars, Saturn, Uranus has something to do with the stop and frisk uh policy that he uh he oh, that he was in office and and uh what did he say he, he was talking about thro- throwing these young uh black and latino uh men up against the wall like that that's that's what he thought needed to happen on a mass scale uh you said cho- choking choking someone out i mean that's what i feel like this Mars Saturn Uranus has that potential for like this this the Mars aggressive Saturnian uh, uh, throwing against slamming against a wall cracking down on the freedoms of so many people. Um, I I really see that strongly in Mike Bloomberg and perhaps combining with the Venus Pluto as you've been talking about. I mean, I just, uh, it's just a very problematic subject area for me on so many levels. I know I've heard counter arguments from people who lived in New York City during that time and speaking about how scary it was to walk down the streets, how dangerous it was, and that, you know, he really helped clean up the streets. And it's like, okay, well, that, that happened. But the way in which it happened um, was extremely problematic. And that creates a legacy. And that creates a legacy of of harm and mistrust. Um, And, you know, really can be seen as an abuse of power. And the closest that Bloomberg I've seen has come to acknowledge what he's done is by saying things like, I know that if I were black, that I wouldn't have been able to make my money. And it's just like, 
good for you, dude. Do you know the $435 million that you've invested into your ads? You could have applied $55 million of that to fix the Flint, Michigan pipes so that the children weren't falling ill from poison. It, it's just, you're going to sit here and tell me you really want to make the world a better place. You want to make the United States a better place. Then why aren't you investing your money in that? And how come you think you can roll up into this political scene so late in the game, not even participate in the preliminary, uh, you know, delegate counts. And a couple of years ago, you were a Republican. It, come on, man. It's a joke. And um, I, I, I have zero respect for that kind of approach and attitude. And in that regard, I stand with Elizabeth Warren fully and everything she said. I mean, I am right there with you, Jessica, a thousand percent. I mean, I, he, he is the most disturbing uh, candidate that I've ever seen. I, th I mean, uh, maybe that's not true, <laughs> but he's definitely right up there. And certainly right now, I think he's a scarier uh, politician than Donald Trump, honestly. Um, and there's a, uh, I heard someone else describe it as, I mean, basically it's, it's an impulse from a right wing uh, person to take over the left wing of the party. And uh, it's, it's a very scary situation, I feel. So it's interesting that he also has the, I th does Biden have, it's Mercury, Venus, Trine, Jupiter. Does he have the moon in there too? I don't think so. Let me pull no, up. just the sun, I think. It's sun, it's sun Mercury, Venus, Trine, Trine Jup Jupiter. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is it up again? Yeah, it's up again. There he is. So I think there's the potential with that kind of... Uh, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, that's what they share in common, right? It's a Mercury, Venus. Yeah, it kind of also looks like Biden has the moon square Jupiter. Uh -huh. um, yes. So they, they do share that as well, the moon Jupiter. I think we see that a lot in politicians where mm. it's about getting a kind of mass scale support of the, of the people. And sometimes I think you see that uh, in Biden's moon square Jupiter and his win in South Carolina and the people that uh, do love him. I think there's a kind of moon Jupiter vibe of feeling uh, a sense of care and support and kind of general kind of family energy. He feels like a kind of family guy. Um, he's, of course, had a lot of tragedy in his his family. But there's uh, that quality of, um, yeah, I think I think a successful politician might often have these kind of Jupiter alignments, Jupiter Sun and Jupiter Moon. But the Jupiter trine Mercury Venus has that potential for that kind of big smiling, sweet talker energy, that kind of natural ability for. Uh, <laughs> for bullshit maybe in some cases for being a, that kind of smiling sweet talker when it's it's maybe not the full story um, that you see behind the scenes yeah I mean you know in part the sun and our egoic consciousness there is an aspect of it that can relate to the persona the mask that we put forward to the world you know, from that which we're identified with being as good, positive qualities, it's going to get us what we want. And with Sun Jupiter and Sun Venus Jupiter, you know, it can be very charming uh -huh. and very charismatic. Yes. And the shadow side, you know, often behind a big smile, just think of the, the Joker, who's classically seen with a big smile, mm. is a lot of darkness, right? And it, it doesn't have to be the case. But when you know you got those white pearly chops you know going so big and then all of a sudden you're getting like really aggressive with your constituents in town hall meetings that are asking you questions 
and you're saying, Hey man, you want to go head to head or let's do, you know, he's like challenging people to a duel <laughs> in this kind of volcanic eruptive way. It's like, Oh, what's behind that sun, Venus, Jupiter. Oh, there's that Mars square Pluto. Couldn't hide it for too long. Could you? Did he challenge somebody to wrestle or something? I can't yeah. You know, wrestle, <laughs> do push ups. You want to take oh, this outside? Let's get down on the floor right now. <laughs> let's do it. I'm going to see who's a real man. I mean, I think the thing that's most troubling for me, uh, one of the things that's most troubling for me about Biden was his just tremendous support for the Iraq war as the head of the uh, Senate uh, Foreign La Relations Committee. He was the number one person on the left who was uh, pushing for the Iraq war and promoting the idea of weapons of mass destruction. And I wonder if that might have something to do with the Mars Square Pluto, or perhaps also the, the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. And maybe we can um, take a look at his transits for a moment. Let's see here. I think for me, you know, just to speak candidly, huh, what else have I ever done? <laughs> You're going to speak candidly now? You haven't, Is been, that... you haven't been doing that, Jessica? <laughs> 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 don't like, hold uh, back it, it, it's like uh what's uh, i was watching like years ago judge judy and uh someone was she, judge judy asked someone something and they said well to be honest judge because you know what you really shouldn't say that in here because everything you are saying should be honest so when you start off with to be honest i'm pretty much just pretty sure you're lying <laughs> so i was what, like damn judge judy <laughs> fucking called it that's what she uh, said <laughs> yeah but yeah, you know, to speak candidly, <laughs> and maybe some people listening aren't going to like this. Um, I think that Joe Biden has done a lot of great things for this country. And I think that there were ways he was very helpful to Barack Obama getting elected. And I don't really know what their relationship was like. Um, and I know that there are a lot of people who admire him and respect him. And what I'm about to say in no way takes away from all those years of service to his country, but I truly genuinely believe the most patriotic thing he could do for America right now is to step down and running for president and align himself again with public service, which would be to see that the energy that he brings and the policies that he brings, um, are, are just not going to cut it for where we're at in this critical moment ecologically uh, with social justice and, um, you know, for better or worse, he is part of the elite democratic establishment. And I think it's time for us to see what else we can do. Well, I, I completely agree there. Um, I, I think this is a huge crossroads in our U.S. history, and um, yeah, it's a, it's it's a moment where people are waking up and seeing through the uh, control matrix. And the thing is, Biden is part of it. Um, the neoconservative uh, movement is is what we're uh, realizing is in the way of so many people having health care and uh, being able to have uh, clean water and, and housing. And yeah, I'm, I'm really right there with you, Jessica. So you pulled up the transits here for Biden. What are you seeing? Well, I, I mean, it, just taking in that he's had this, this big win after really seeming like he was uh, maybe completely out of it. Um, there is certainly a rush of energy that's coming towards him. Uh, he certainly raised a lot of money in the last uh, 24 hours, which gives the resources to continue forward. And I guess the biggest thing that I'm seeing is that the, the Jupiter-Saturn Pluto triple conjunction, which is soon going to be this in this month of March, as we get to the middle of March, it's just going to be super tight, and the whole thing's going to be opposite his his Jupiter Pluto, 
which Mm -hmm. that combination has the potential for like rising out of the depths up to the heights. I mean, he's uh, he's gone down big time uh, in terms of his uh, what's been happening in the last uh, couple months in the first primaries. But now there's a sense of renewed potential for for him. I don't think it's going to hold as we get into Super Tuesday, but uh, there we don't know. Um, and I, I definitely think there's a potential with Jupiter Pluto opposite Jupiter uh, to bring a, a wave of of success and empowerment, um, a kind of rising back up. He's going to he's already being kind of celebrated um, by the mainstream media in a huge way. If you look at the coverage. And yeah, and I mean, Saturn in there is interesting, though. Uh, I mean, on the one hand, it can kind of strengthen that that success, but it could also um, block it, especially as Saturn's going to end up being stationary opposite his Pluto, which um, I think we'll take one more look at Bloomberg's chart. You'll see that Saturn is uh, opposing his is that what's going on? Is he getting Saturn uh, T-squaring his? No, he's getting, wait a second. Let me just look at it before I pull it up. He's, yeah, he's getting Saturn about to uh, conjoin his Venus and opposite his Pluto. So Bloomberg and Biden both have Pluto in the same place, just uh, three degrees apart. Saturn is gonna station right on Bloomberg's Venus opposite Pluto whereas uh, Biden is getting more Saturn kind of going across the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. So I don't know. The, the Saturn square Uranus also is uh, is there, and in both Saturn and Uranus forming a, a T-square on both Biden and Bloomberg's natal Pluto. So, yeah, what do you think about all that? I mean, I guess I'm just really struck by um, the true myriad of ways that these energies can come through and just the incredible plurality of the archetypes and being struck by the Saturn Uranus in the sky and then in Biden, Bloomberg and Bernie's charts um, it really makes me think about all the ways that that can come through. It can be the conservative disguised as the progressive. It can be the progressive disguised as a conservative. It can be someone who's dedicated themselves to a lifelong career in democracy. It can be someone who's trying to overthrow the establishment It can be someone who's trying to um, control the freedoms. Um, It it can go in so many different ways. And I think in all three of these characters, you see different versions of it in various points in their timeline of their life. And I think that's what's being accented right now. And I think one thing about Biden is... um, you know, you see this a lot with the sun Venus energy where, uh, there's this like placating, um, and I, white lies. It's, 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 I think in a way the sun Venus person often believes what they're saying, or they've just kind of gotten to a habit of doing white lies to the point that, um, it just becomes a part of who they are. I mean, even the term white lie is, is problematic um, because it, it makes it sound like it's less of a problem than what would the other type of lying be called, <laughs> right? It's like, oh, it's a white lie. It's a little more pure. It's a little bit more clean. Right. Right. But what I'm getting at is, you know, you just see that Biden recently mentioned that he was arrested in South Africa Right. And now he's coming out saying, oh, I guess I wasn't. <laughs> How do you and get it's that like, wrong? dude, that's like a total career politician shadow move. Like yeah. you just say what you need to say in the moment. That's going to create the best story, best optics. 
best image for that moment. And I think what we're seeing with the Jupiter Saturn Pluto opposite is Jupiter are these kind of extreme high and lows, right? He comes in real low in the first three states. He comes in super high in the fourth state. Super Tuesday is coming up in, you know, 48 hours. And it's like, it's, you know, who knows? It could be all over the place. He could go way back down again. He could go way back up. But it's this kind of extreme up and down roller coaster. Right. And it kind of feels like his life is a little bit like that. But I think. Yes, for sure what we're seeing now. And then I think that's part of why we like him. Someone who's lost a wife and two kids and still can have a smile on their face. You have to have a certain kind of respect for that person. Yeah. And I do, you know, he, I mean, he, he often during the Obama administration won my heart as far as like that kind of moon Jupiter glowing feeling of warmth, like you said, a family man and like, wow, you know, and that's incredible. And I think that's real. I think it's genuine. Yes. Um, but I also think that I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why he's running for office. And I think the level of transparency that's happened while he's been on the campaign trail has been very difficult for him to, to face and to swallow. Like, I think he really encountered his shadow in a really big way. And I, I don't think he's handling it very well, very maturely. And I think with the Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto in the sky opposite his Jupiter, we're going to kind of see more of the like, huh, it's interesting, the clown archetype. I don't really know what that means. The clown um, archetype. Yeah, I don't really know what that means, but that's kind of what came came out for me. Yeah, let's. Uh, I want to inquire into. I think that that's interesting. I mean, the clown, traditionally, uh, like the court gesture, is meant to reveal. It's is the one safe person in the, uh, the royal uh, kingdom or whatever that's allowed to show the shadow of the the king or the emperor or whoever. They're they're meant to to make fun of the, the royal, and. Uh, so I think the clown does play that that role of revealing shadow. I mean, the guy has like fubbed so many times, misspoken so many times to the point of just straight up lying and misremembering things, completely fabricating stories. I mean, over and over and over again, this has happened. And I just feel like it speaks to his white privilege. If he was a person of color or a woman or both, there's no way that he would be able to still be in this race given all of the mishaps that he's had. But there's an, a tremendous amount of leniency for him yes. because he's a white man, because he's upper class and because he's the jolly uncle. Right. And of course, the other big uh, part of his history was the role he played in the Anita Hill, uh, Clarence Thomas hearings. And uh, he played a huge role in uh, her ultimately being dismissed and not honored for what she was reporting to the Congress, the Senate, I guess. Mm -hmm. So okay. we're looking at the, the chart for the convention and it's pretty dramatic with the sun opposite the Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn. Uh, very tight um, on it's the 16th through the 19th and I think I mean we I think it's very likely that he'll be uh, he may be out of the picture um, before the convention but if he's not it's going to be a very interesting drama to unfold there um, I mean he's likely not to have anywhere near the number of delegates as uh, Bernie but um, it's, it's pretty exact, this whole alignment on his Jupiter there. It's all on his Jupiter. Jupiter and Pluto are all within four degrees of his Jupiter, is, and Saturn's within four degrees. The sun's exactly conjunct his Jupiter. <coughs> Excuse me. I was just thinking back to the clown archetype and thinking about, you know, this whole thing that happened with his son 
in the Ukraine and how it kicked off this whole process of you know, the quid pro quo with Trump and, you know, all this insanity over the last months. And it's like, he did play a significant role in revealing abuse of power uh, in the Trump administration. Of course, Biden, a career politician, um, also has had abuses of power. And I think this goes back to thinking about what does it mean to go outside of the control matrix and essentially what what a big part of what that would look like is not just the redistribution of wealth, but the redistribution of power so that elite white men um, aren't um, either making all the laws or being able to go outside of the laws because of the money that they have. And in both Trump's case and in Biden's case, they've been able to get away with things because of the wealth uh, that they have. And I think it's a, an interesting mirroring process that actually took place there. No, no way do I think Biden is, is like Trump, but it speaks to the inherent problems of what it means to be a career politician and to have that much wealth and therefore have that much influence nationally and internationally. And then what that does as far as things like nepotism goes, right? both in the Trump administration and Biden with his son, nepotism's at play and they're using their position of wealth and status to make their children make a lot more money. Right. And that's also a very, very problematic thing of, of US politics, especially when the taxpayer's money is not only paying their salaries, but is going into giving them the status and the influence and reach to then make more money for their whole family. While at the same time, we're not getting what we're paying for. Our taxes are going to corporate subsidies and war. And in the meantime, you know, the money that I work doing what I do doesn't go to giving me healthcare, education, or uh, paid time off. It, it, it goes to ultimately these people getting more wealth and status. And, uh, you know, Joe Biden is a part of that story. Yeah, I think uh, the whole issue of nepotism and uh, the, I mean, basically nepotism is how privilege is, is passed on to the next generations, generation after generation. It's very systematic, systemic, I should say. So I've put up Bernie to try to get a little bit of uh, relief here in terms of uh, taking a look at a different chart and different transits. Here we are at the, um, oh no, I've, I've got the wrong chart here, actually. I gotta put up the conventions chart, one second. Do you have something else you wanna say, Jessica, while I'm getting this up oh, here? Oh yeah, I guess I can get like a little intense, you know, when Biden and Bloomberg come up because um, it's just, there's nothing like when I feel it in my heart, like I just like bring it into my body and feel my heart. And I imagine either of them being present. And yes, for the record, I will vote for anybody who goes against Trump. Yes, of course. But in my heart, it's just, oh, it feels dead. It feels old world, old school, like not alive. And we're killing our planet and whoever gets elected into office represents so much. It's the most important president in history because of where we're at globally. And I think my heart just aches even imagining it being Bloomberg or Biden. And I, so I think, you know, Oh gosh when I talk about it, it's like hard for my interpretations not to come from that place of heartache. Oh, I think you're really giving voice to something in a very powerful way. I'm so grateful. I mean, I think for you as a Sun, Neptune, Mercury empath, 
some Mercury, Neptune, empath, uh, the potential for you to give voice to collective feelings. I mean, I, I think you're speaking for many, many people. I, clearly, uh, the so many people share what you're saying. And I think we see it in, I meant to share um, this one story here. Maybe I'll do this real quick before um, we look at Bernie's chart in transits, because I think it demonstrates how many people you're you're speaking for um let me bring this up this is um one of the polls that i've i just saw here's bernie opens up massive lead among college students i mean look at what's happening here with sanders he's got a double the amount of support in millennials and college age uh, students and it's it's shot up look how much it shot up since december 2nd up 19 uh, percentage points in just a, a couple points and i think it has so much to do with just the the exposure that he's getting as the front runner they were denying coverage to his success as much as possible they still are but uh, they they now have to cover him uh in ways they didn't before and I think the exposure and also of course the incredible ground game of his uh, his team and his supporters is changing the tides I mean look at look at the support that somebody like Biden has among college age students right now seven percent uh, Bloomberg four point four percent Steyer the other bill billionaire one point one percent and the other poll here 70% of millennials say they'd vote for a socialist. 70% of the next generation who's going to be deciding who's in power in the coming years. If, like you say, this this election is so huge because if Trump gets another four years or if it were Bloomberg to get four years uh, or Biden, I think, uh, might be slightly less extreme. But uh, yeah, there's so much on the line in this election. And so, yeah, I think we're getting close to the end of our time for today. But do you want to just say a couple words about Bernie's transits for the um, <laughs> Democratic Convention here? Let me see where it is again. I think it's this one. Is this it? I think we are living in a time where the way that we practice whatever it is that we do is essential. And... By practice, I mean in the Buddhist sense of sadhana, like our spiritual practice and the way that we live our lives, the way we make our money, the way we spend our money, um, the way that we do our work, the way that we show up for our work, the mindset, um, the level of presence, it matters. It, it genuinely matters more than ever. And what I have deep respect for Bernie Sanders and the people that are part of his grassroots movement is that they are, you know, to the best of their human abilities, embodying the principles upon which he's speaking. He's, he's walking the talk and he's walking the talk more than I've ever seen anybody else do it. Whether that's not, you know, whether that's having, all your donations come from regular people like you and me, um, whether that's the amount of volunteers uh, that is multiracial, uh, multi-generational, going in and doing the honest day-to-day on-the-ground work. Um, I have deep respect for that, especially with how money's in politics. And I think you can see in Bernie's transits a lot of the beauty of the way that the Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, triple conjunction, and Capricorn is lining up with his chart, which was, is in an awesome Earth trine with uh -huh. his natal, really, Sun Neptune, uh, which is yes. trine Saturn. Yes. And I think that that's a really glowing, harmonious, supportive 
practical, earthy, embodied, grassroots, salt of the earth, for fucking real, stop the bullshit um, alignment. And he's a visionary and there's a vision there, but it's super earthy. It's super Saturn. It's, it's grounded. And, you know, he is very clear about where all the money is going to come from for all of his policies. And I respect it because the vision of his platforms truly embody the principles upon which he's speaking. And I think that is the gift of earth signs in general. And I think that's the gift of um, this really nice, even, um, you know, Saturn trying Saturn. It's exact on the day of the convention. That's totally. pretty kick ass. I think so. His, his life work, you know, consolidating and coming together and, and manifesting in a really powerful, plutonic, titanically massive and supportive way with Jupiter. I mean, I love, I love seeing those alignments for him for the day of the convention. Yeah, I think what you, I love that you're pointing that out. And uh, I, I think the, what's going on with that Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, it's, it's retrograding back towards a station um, in August and September. And when Jupiter stations, it's at 17 Capricorn. So as, as he's going to the election, he's going to have stationary Jupiter trying his son with Pluto and Saturn in there, um, more on the Saturn trying Neptune really strongly. And uh, yeah, again, a kind of a strengthening of a part of his chart that's already super strong and strengthening in a trine, trine formation, which just, I don't know, it's super strong, like the potency of a, of a pyramid or a triangle. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one thing that I meant to say uh, in our last episode, which is this, this Saturn-Uranus conjunction is in a pretty tight trine to his Neptune and Mercury, the Uranus trine Mercury. I just feel like he's he's giving voice to the future. He's speaking the future, but also from a place that's super grounded and super uh, wise. And um, yeah, I I love that 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 whole part of his chart, the Saturn Uranus trine Mercury Neptune, is getting these long lasting outer planet trines. I mean, the, the Pluto trine is just going to be there. Let's assume he wins the election, praise the goddess. Um, that Pluto trine, grand trine, the Mercury Uranus for uh, his first term, basically, if I'm not mistaken, what's Pluto going to be doing through 2021? It gets to 26 Capricorn and then 2022 it's at 28 Capricorn 2023 uh, it's it's really tight at zero Aquarius so yeah um, and yeah he'll have Jupiter going across that too so I think we should uh, close for today Jessica mm -hmm. I mean you're so amazing I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you're so clear and so powerful and you're giving voice, I think, also to, uh, you're giving voice to the future, but you're also giving voice to what's happening right now in such a way that I feel is, um, well, I'm really grateful for all that you've shared. And do you want to say anything about uh, your, the work you're doing, your website, uh, please? Oh, thanks for being such a, a healing presence in my life and such a deep ally, truly. I mean, I, you know, as I said yesterday, it's a real privilege for me to be here with you. But I really feel like we're having healing conversations when we talk. And I'm just so grateful to you. And um, yeah, you know, I always love to hear from our listeners. You can find me at trustpsyche.com. Um, have a full-time psychotherapy practice. I do readings and um, 
you know, my, my pride and joy are the online uh, astrology courses that I teach through Trust Psyche. We have over 100 students now from all around the world. And you can begin those classes right now by going to trustpsyche.com and learn how to do what we do and practice the way that we practice. Um, and you can also check out my podcast stream, the Trust Psyche podcast on your favorite podcast app or on my YouTube channel, Trust Psyche. And you can always follow me on social media, either on Facebook at Trust Psyche. We also have a group if you want to come join the conversation, the Trust Psyche uh, archetypal astrology and depth psychology learning community. And, uh, yeah, you can find me out on Instagram as well. So thank you so much, everybody for, uh, being on this journey with us. That's awesome. Thank you, Jessica. Definitely check out Jessica's Facebook community. It's growing. It's awesome. I love being in there with you and sharing in there. I think uh, it's going to be such a source of support and fun. I think there's a lot of fun <laughs> that are happening there and uh, like kind of unique quality of astrology that I just love being a part of. So I, you can find me uh, on my website at matthewstelsner.com or stels.biz. And uh, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, of course, you'll see that I've got a lot of uh, videos and putting more focus on my YouTube channel and making a lot of videos trying to put those out uh, weekly. And so thank you all for uh, being with us today and following correlations. We've been doing this for nine years and I hope we'll keep doing it for another nine years and beyond. <laughs> and uh, yes, blessings to everyone, sending love and light and keep up the fight, the good fight. Fight for uh, love. Blessings. Thank you.